Go Ghostbusters. We're ready to believe you. Ah, Ghostbusters, how I remember you fondly from my childhood. Although I was a child of the 90s and not a child of 1984, I remember getting these toys and being amazed by the world of the Ghostbusters. Let me take you back, guys, and get nostalgic, because I learned everything I need to know from the Ghostbusters. I learned how to flirt. I learned how to be cool. And most of all, I learned that ghosts do exist. And of course, it gave me the best chat-up line in the playground. I had the old Kenner toys thanks to my parents who went around the car boot sales and things like that and managed to pick pick me up the Firehouse, the Ecto-1, the actual um, like children's play kits with the uh, ghost trap and the plasma gun. I had everything and I loved the movie to death. I wore out the VHS tape. Ghostbusters is one of those iconic films, and you can tell it's iconic by the amount of merchandise that has spawned many, many years for it, including Playmobil, Lego, even modern stuff like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are crossing over with it, and modern stuff like Funkos, and even Stranger Things got on board with it, and they even produced figures which were officially licensed Ghostbusters figures because they had the actual logo on their arms. So, Ghostbusters has spanned a lot, a lot of people's generations, and that's really cool because I can't wait for the new movie, Afterlife, and hopefully it continues that nostalgic feel. More modern times, we've even had people like The Undertaker trying to be Gozer, as he and the WWE superstars trying to take him on. What I'm trying to say is, guys, Ghostbusters is one of those franchises for me that is really nostalgic, and I think it is for you as well. So let's take to today to look at the new Plasma series with nostalgic eyes, and let's remember the fun we had as kids, and let's play Ghostbusters. Hey guys, me host was Harold, thank you very much for tuning in. So, it's time to review these brand new Ghostbusters Plasma series action figures. I'm really excited to crack all these open guys. We're going to open them all on camera. We've got all four of the Ghostbusters. We've of course got Winston Zeddemore, Egon Spangler, or oh, Spengler sorry, Egon Spengler. We've got Peter Venkman, everyone's favourite. Uh, I think everyone's second favourite, definitely, Ray Stans. Other than them guys, we also have the all-powerful Gozer. Gozer, the destructor has come. We'll see what forms she takes during this video. And we've also, of course, got Dana Barrett. I'm very excited because we finally got a Dana. I know we got a San Diego Comic Con, which I've got on my shelf somewhere along there, um, a long time ago, but we're finally getting a proper action figure of Dana. Um, we haven't had a decent Zool since the Diamond Select, so I'm really looking to see how those compare. And then, of course, we've had previous incarnations of the Ghostbusters from Mattel, which I will be comparing them with today. So we will look at them side by side of each individual character and decide which is better, the new Hasbro or the old Mattel. As well, guys, we have a bunch of other nostalgic toys to look at in Ghostbusters today, which I will bring on as well uh, throughout the video. And, of course, it wouldn't be a Super Soul video without all those good, fun, stupid skits. Of course, the Ghostbusters are going to take on various characters and try and bust some ghosts during today's video. So I'm not going to open them all on camera because that would be silly and that, that would take so long. But what I will do actually is I will open up Ray Stands on camera because I want to show you the box art as well. And of course I want to show you how they come, you know, how they look in the box and stuff. And then I'll open the rest off camera. But we've got Ray Stands first of all. Each figure does actually have a little write about them. Ray says the heart of the team. Ray's ready and more than willing to bust some ghosts. Of course the builder figure is going to be the, um, they call it Vince Clortho which is one of the Devil dogs, I believe. The likeness isn't that bad. It's a bit, it's comic, it's cartoony, but it's not what we expect in people. It is the photo real tech they have been using on Star Wars that they've used on these. It does look like they have taken an actual or used stills from the movie or whatever to recreate his face. It does look decently like him, to be honest. I'd like to know whether these guys were actually were um, in fault, like, I wonder if they actually had to get the permissions to do it. Because they do actually look decently like them. They must have done, because they are making, obviously, the Afterlife product as well. <clears throat> the figures themselves are very nice indeed. The heads are on ball joints. 
so you can make them look up and down, arms lift out, as well as with a butterfly hinge, which is nice. There's a top bicep cut there, and there's a double hinged elbow on these. Just needs a little bit of activating, just pull that in, there we go, it pulls in all the way. Hands as well are on ball joints, which is nice. There's the place at the back, ooh, in the, in the back of the figure, for us to put the proton pack, and he does have a hinge on the waist there. I wouldn't crunch it too far forward, because it does reveal at the back there. The belt is actually separate to the rest of the body piece, which is nice. Legs lift out at the side all the way, as well as forwards, backwards. There is a top thigh cut there, as well as a double hinged knee. No boot cut or anything like that, but the feet are on rocker and pivot. And there's also holes at the bottom of the feet to use a base, should you wish to. The actual proton pack pieces look very nice. They actually clip on at the side. So we open that one side up there, slide it over his head. I have to put the other arm through for it. There we go, because the only one side opens. Slide over his head. Slide it down. And then, of course, find the back piece. Slide that into the back piece there so it's nice and firm. And then reattach the green to the side. There we go. And the gun is on. The backpack is on, sorry, the backpack's on. Clip, clipped on quite firm as well. I like the fact that it's got the clip piece and it's got a uh, hole in the back, so that's not going anywhere. Uh, the gun, can it be clipped to the side of the unit? Yes, it can. So there is a little hole in the top of the gun. And that just ports to the side of the unit. Let me show you. So there's a little nub there, there's a little hole there. Put them together, boop. You can have the gun stored rather than carrying it all the time, which is nice. He also comes with his goggles, so we'll slide those on the top of his head. So in the film, um, he only wore them a couple of times, but I remember that when he wasn't wearing them, he just had them on the top of his head. So I'm going to see if I can recreate him just holding them up. Oh, they do not want to go on his head. His head is the wrong... It's like... It's not upside down, is there anything like that? No. No. No, it's just very tight. That plastic's very, very tight. So it's making it hard to slide on. It's his quiff at the front which is causing most of the issues. There we go. Once you've got it kind of halfway on, I think it will eventually pop off. If you had that on display like that, I've got a feeling you'd come back in a few days and find the visor missing. So I've got a feeling that will pop eventually. Like, the pressure will just bounce it off. And that the port for the side piece for the plasma, the plasma rifle isn't the sturdiest either, I've knocked that off pretty easily. But I suppose on display it should look very nice. And then of course we came with the first piece of our Devil Dog. Terror Dog? Devil Dog? I can never remember what, what, what they called it. Isn't Devil Dog what, what they call the military in America? Hoorah! <laughs> what am I in the battle? Anyway, that's the first piece. So I'm going to quick, quickly nip off camera now and unbox the, re the rest of these guys and then I'll show you the rest of the line. Okay, so they're all out of the packaging. So the Winston figure came with an accessory piece of the Proton Blaster, which is really cool. This is a piece of the wavy orange plastic with this nice covering over the top. Again, this could be used with other figures like your Marvel Legends and such. But one thing that did annoy me is we've only got one of them, so we can't have... We can't do like across the streams things, you know what I mean? We can't display them with the streams crossed or anything. We only have one. Which is a little bit annoying. I'm hoping to, that we're going to get another release of another figure with another one so we can, you know, do more. But I wish that all of them came with one of these, or at least two of the figures in the line came with one of these. The accessory piece that came with Venkman was the trap. Now, the trap doesn't have a foot pump or any wires or anything attached to it, which is weird. It's just the loose trap itself. I wish that came with like the, the actual foot thing and everything. That would be a lot nicer. If you could attach it to his belt and then have it displayed where he's like throwing it out. Obviously you know that Stans came with the, the goggles. Venkman actually comes with the PKE reader. PKE reader? Yeah. And it's you can attach it to his waist just like the Jedi's lightsabers. It's just the, the, uh, the same trick they use with the lightsabers on Star Wars. So those are the four Ghostbusters. We'll look at the face sculpts and stuff like that uh, when, when we go down uh, to the desk cam itself. But we've also got Dana Barrett. 
Now she's got the exact same articulation as the Ghostbusters, except she's got a bit more waist articulation than they have, so you can crank her around a little bit more and get some really cool poses. She's actually got bare feet on this one as well, um, and it's the same pegs as Marvel Legends, just to let you know, because I know a lot of people probably will take the female figure for um, parts, because obviously the legs and things like that on this, bare legs and stuff, Normally, nearly every Marvel Legend female character comes with the, like, One Piece uh, black leggings are usually on them or whatever, so I can see some people stealing this figure just for parts. And, of course, it comes with the hands and the plain female hands as well, which, again, are on the same ball joint, I believe, as Marvel Legends, just a pop joint by the looks of that. The figure itself is very nice. I'm liking the fact that the dress is off the shoulder at one side, just like in the movie, and they have given her a nice red eye effect as well, which is cool. And it does it does look like Sigourney Weaver quite a lot. It does look like her from the film. So I'm quite liking that one. I think I prefer that to my old one. I'm going to compare them, though, on the desk cam for you. And then, of course, we've got to aim for the flat top. <clears throat> as we have Goza the Destructors. Come. Now, I know Goza was thin in the movie and she was uh, like it was a was it a gymnast that played her in the film as the stunt as the actress and um i just think she's a little bit too small the diamond select one might obviously might look a little bit more menacing down looking down at the actual ghostbusters where i think this one looks a little bit too small i'm not sure but she probably is to scale she's just she's about the same height as venkman but she's very 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 small very petite so i don't know I think the Diamond Select might look maybe too out of scale though. Might be too big. But again, we'll do side by side comparisons. They've given us a very nice face sculpt here. Just the one face sculpt, Diamond Select gave us two, but they've just given us the one there. But they have given her as some alternate hands, which include the lightning. Are you a god? Then die. <laughs> And these are the same hands that we got with the Emperor. Um, so, will they work with the Emperor? Funnily enough, I have an Emperor right here. <laughs> Let's take a look. Luckily, I have the Emperor sat on his throne right inside of me. So let me go ahead and pop that hand off. And that one. Oh yes, they will. Oh yes, they will. They'll straight part with him. And they kind of match his skin tone as well, because he's quite pale. So if you maybe had the older version of the Emperor that never came with those lightning effects, and you couldn't, you know, you can't find the new, the new Emperor, there's an option for you, peoples. I know you won't have the face gloves, but at least you'll have the effects. And I like the fact they're purple and not blue, because I believe they were blue, weren't they, for the Emperor? I'm liking the purple. So that gives us alternate colours. So that's nice. So some nice accessories. I was just upset that Dana came with nothing. That's what made me think they could have at least included an, another proton, you know, another, sorry, another um, blaster for us. So we also now have the Builder figure. It does actually look very cool. Do you remember he was in the fridge? <laughs> I'm putting that in the fridge. <laughs> it's going in the fridge later. I'm putting this in the fridge. Oh, my, I love it. So you can make him look up and down as well. So he's got some decent head movements. He can also move left and right. The arms obviously move outwards as well as forwards, backwards. There's hinges for the elbows and the feet are on rocker pivot. There's no holes at the bottom of the feet. So you can't use any display bases. Not that you would need to. Again, I'm not sure if I've even got the legs on the right ones here. I think they're, I think I've got them back to front. I'll have to relook at the back of the packaging. Although I don't know. Them legs at the front do look good. I'll have to relook. But yeah, the figure itself is very cool. I just need to double check on the legs. <laughs> Whether I've built that so wrong. I think I have. I think the legs are back to front. We'll have a look, we'll correct it anyway. But yeah, let's go on down to the desk out and take a close look at all these figures. So we started out with these guys. These are the uh, the new versions, but these were basically the ones I had as a kid with the Firehouse and Ecto-1. And they even re-gave us Slimer and the uh, 
Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And these were the figures that I had as a kid, and I still love them to this day. And I'm so glad they got a little remake, because it made me also, also nostalgic. And made me want to go back and collect them, so I'm very happy to have those as a part of our Ghostbusters lineup today. Then we had the Stranger Things kids in their Ghostbusters outfits as well. I'm not going in any particular order here, I'm just showing them. Again, I reviewed these on the channel not that long ago. These are the Strange Things Season 2 McFarlane's figures. And they're in the official Ghostbusters outfits. You can tell that because they actually have the official Ghostbusters logo on the arm. So they must have seeked the license rights to do that. To make them official. And of course they came with their own Proton Pack and the, um, the trap. Uh, which is totally out of scale to our current figure. So we can't use any of these so far with our current figures because these are 7 inch scale and the backpacks look huge on the 6 inch figures so these are completely incompatible with the new ones sadly I was hoping to get away with using the kid from the new movie in that suit but sadly will not go too big which is a real shame and then of course we got the Mattel figures which some people say are the best ones to date um, no <laughs> looking at these new skulls we've just got these Hasbro ones people kidding me when they say that they prefer the Mattel figures? Look at this! It looks nothing like them! I know these figures are older, look at those glasses. I know the figures are older, but come on. These weren't bad for the time, and admittedly when I first reviewed them, when they came out at B&M here in the UK, which is a discount store, we got them all dirt cheap here in the UK, and everybody bought a set. But you know what? I do prefer the plasma series and I'm not just saying that because I'm reviewing them now I do I prefer the sculpts they're so much nicer let's go ahead and do some side-by-side -side comparisons for you so there we have the two Zedemores <laughs> look at the Ray Stats figures <laughs> admittedly the new one isn't much better but I do prefer this the, the newer faces come on look at that old one and then of course we've got Venkman and Venkman. And then finally the two Spenglers. Come on, there's no there's no way people can say the Mattel figures are better. There's just no way. These new plasma ones are a lot nicer when you look at them side by side. Come on. But either way, those were the figures that paved the way for these. The brand new plasma series figures which I believe are really nice and I'm really enjoying looking at these and playing around with them. They're very articulated, uh, they've got some nice detailing to the figures, not the best accessories, could have been better in that respect, but this is only wave one. I'm hoping they've made them enough return on these to warrant a wave two. We are getting a San Diego Comic Con figure of Louis. Uh, is it what's called Louis, right? Louis Tilly? Yeah, sure, Louis. Um, we are getting him very soon. Um, as well from San Diego Comic Con, so that should be nice. And I, hopefully I can get my hands on that in the UK, because that also gives us the second bath figure, the, well, the second devil dog. I keep saying devil dog, still not sure if that's the right term. <laughs> but either way, these figures for me, I like the paint apps, I like the articulation, and I think these definitely are the Ghostbusters that I would have wanted as a kid. Ray, I've been training the new recruits all morning. I think they're ready for their first assignment. Do they know how to use the proton packs? What does that mean? He said he understands. And remember, Beaker, don't cross the streams. Goza the Destructor has come. Choose and perish. <laughs> so there she is out of the packaging, guys. She's looking cool. Loving the face sculpt on this. That, not that uh, face sculpt is very nice. Loving the flat top. Aim for the flat top! The big red eyes and stuff, very nice face sculpts. The body itself has been well cast. They've done a great job bringing this to life. I really mean it. And uh, yeah, the pinky, the pinky white is a bit... It doesn't show up on camera very well. But then again, in the film it was very bright. So I suppose that's in keeping with the figure. And the Diamond Soul Select figure is very similar. In fact, we'll put the two together side by side. Size difference. Jesus. Ah, oh, come on. Ah. 
Yeah, so as you see them side by side, you can tell that the Diamond Select one is too tall for us to be using with our uh, figures, even though, I think I was, even though I was thinking about it in the beginning. Actually, no, we will keep the regular new one. The Diamond Select one is very inferior by design, and she's fallen over already. The new one's been standing on those heels for a long time, hasn't fallen once yet. I haven't had to rechange her since she stood on the, on the desk earlier. Whereas the Diamond Select one just will not stand up for the love of money. I have to use a base with her at all times. It's so annoying. But, you know, I prefer this new sculpt. I actually like it. I'm not I'm not mad at it. But the figure that I've been waiting for the most, let's check out Dana Barrett. Choose the form of your destructor. Don't think of anything bigger. Yeah, I don't think of anything. The form of the destructor has been chosen. Who thought of something? Oh, Beaker. He said it just popped right in there. I am about to kill all you Ghostbusters because the destructor has come. And here she is, the love interest of my childhood, Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> Ghostbusters is an amazing movie. She plays a great female role in it. Um, it wasn't a damsel in distress role either. I think she was a very powerful woman in this film. I really liked how Sigourney Weaver pulls her off. Loving that face sculpt on this one with the big hair. Matches the film perfectly. And you know what? I like this figure a lot. Um, we have got the old San Diego Comic Con one to compare her to. But I don't think there's going to be any comparison because I remember the paint apps on that other one was awful. But she did come with a very cool accessory that we can use with this new version. So here is the old San Diego Comic Con version. She came with the cool bench. So you could recreate that seed where she sort of comes back. And she came in equal pieces so you can actually pull her apart and uh, have her standing up or have her sat down on the bench. But the, she actually is fully removable from the bench. So we now have a really cool marble bench. Let's see if we can recreate the pose with our new Dana Barrett. Nah, the dress piece won't allow her to get into a seated position at all. The best we can do is lay her down on it, which mm, I'm not a fan of. I will probably keep this one for the time being and put her back on the shelf where she belongs. Ah, oh, that's a real shame. It would have been nice to have recreated that. Wonder if in the future they'll give us this version of Dana of Dana from the film. Who knows? That would be cool, but mm, for now, we'll have to reuse the bench with something else. That's a shame. And then finally, we have the Bath Dog piece. Look how cool he is! I'm loving the detailing on this thing. It's so good. Look at that face sculpt. There, it's snarling back at us. Such a cool figure. It's a great bath. Definitely glad they made this one. Liking the skin patterns and stuff. And yeah, I think I have got the legs the right way around, guys. I have the big stocky legs at the front. That's the way it seems to fit together. The figure's very sturdy as well. It's very, very um, thick and nice, so it's not going anywhere. Definitely a worthy bath. I think Hasbro could take Legend, could, could uh, give some points as well. Not Hasbro. The team who made the Go the Ghostbusters could give the uh, team at Legends a bit of a, a bit of a nudge and say, "Come on, look what we've made." Because some of the Marvel bath figures recently, hmm, they've been all right. But look at that Devil Dog, loving it. Super cool. So a lot of people did hate on this line when it came out. And you know what, all I've got to say is, just go back to that place when you were a kid. When you first watched Ghostbusters and you were amazed at the awesome CGI of the time. The jokes, the inappropriate camaraderie. <laughs> and probably a film you shouldn't have watched at the age you watched it with some of those in-jokes. But, nonetheless, Ghostbusters has become one of those family blockbusters. It's played every Christmas on the TV. It's played every Halloween on the TV. It's one of those movies that no matter what the weather, if you and your family sit down and watch it, you know you're in for a good time. Busting ghosts with the Ghostbusters. I hope you've enjoyed this review, guys. I've enjoyed making it for you. So thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm your host, Super Sorrel, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really supports us, and it really helps us out. Have an awesome day, guys, and may the Force 
be with you. Bye!